messed up. Let me show you. This is a sermon from Mark Driscoll this past Sunday. And this is something that he said. I said, God told me a trap was set. So I asked him, I said, let me, let me just say, this is him describing the, the reason why he left Mars Hill. Now, there were a bunch of elders who were calling him for accountability that he was going through this period where he said that he was going to submit himself and that it would be like church discipline for him and all of that. And then he just ran. He just ran down to Arizona and he started his own church. But he's describing like the in-between of like when he's thinking that he was going to go through some kind of accountability with Mars Hill and the elders there. And then, you know, when he decided to leave. So he, he says that he was praying and his wife was praying. They're different sides of the house. And they both felt like God told them, uh, he didn't say felt like he said, God told them that they were released. And for Mark, he heard from God that there was a trap set for him. And this is what he has to describe about that. Do, do, do you know what that might be? And these people that we had known said, uh, yeah, the nuclear option was we were going to accuse you of adultery. This was at Panera, multiple meetings at Panera. It's like, you guys discussed accusing me of adultery. I was like, you know that's not true. I've been faithful to my wife my whole life. I adore my wife. I love my wife and she loves me. We've been faithful to each other. We've been open our whole marriage about any struggles we have had because we know that every married couple has some hardship to go through and we have never been dishonest, but we have never done that. We've never done anything remotely like that. They said, yeah, that's why we kept it as the nuclear option. I was like, to get me what? They said, to get you out of the pulpit. They said, because we knew that if we accused you of adultery and enough of us signed the open letter, man that ultimately there would be such a media firestorm that you would have to exit ministry, exit preaching God's word for probably a year while a full investigation was done. I want you to notice some things, okay? Now, some of you might be watching this and just being like taken back, like, wow, someone would accuse him of that? All right, uh, no one's ever accused him of that. Now, talking about hypotheticals of what someone was willing to do is one thing. Also, in all of the rise and fall of Mars Hill, no one ever heard about this. No one referenced anything like this. This is coming out of left field. There's a lot of different accusations about Mark Driscoll. But then to talk about investigations like this, look what he's doing. During that time, we could take over and lead and be in charge and... And then we figured one of two things would happen. Either you would come back, but we would be in charge, or you would never come back and you'd be done forever. I came home, I told Grace, I was like, oh my gosh. Multiple people told me that to my face on separate occasions and days. Now watch what he does to his congregation. I want you to be, if I'm gonna be your pastor and I love you, I promise you this, I'll always tell you the truth. And I want you to love and honor and respect Christian leaders and pastors. Don't assume the worst, assume the best. And don't believe everything you hear and don't contribute to the gossip that just takes lies and gives them life. He just gaslit his whole congregation. All right, he's saying that there was this hypothetical, like we don't know whether it's true that someone was going willing to do this to get him out of the ministry. And he's using that to his congregation to say, don't listen to those people with their stories, with their gossip. They, he's the one putting this story out. No one else put this story out. They put out different stories that are true. All right, there's a big difference. He, they put out different stories that are true not ones that were made up or that were hypotheticals. He did that. They put out real stories and he's saying, don't, don't listen to those people. Congregation. Listen to me. Why? I'll never lie to you. I'll never lie to you. Trust me. That is what it looks like to gaslight a church. 
to say, don't listen to that podcast. Don't listen to the people talking about me online. Yeah, they're bringing up all kinds of past things. Did you know what they were willing to do? They never said it, but I think that they were willing to do this. Isn't that awful? I would never cheat on my wife. No one ever accused him of that. They accused him of other things that were disqualifying for a pastor. 